Welcome back to Cover Decoder, the show where we take art history and we make it a lot cooler. That's Today, right. <laughs> I'm riding <laughs> with my two best buds, Mr. Tapes, Amber Engineer, and today we're gonna we're gonna talk about metal, which I love metal personally. Metal is uh, what helps us yes. make cars. Um, you know, a lot of cooking stuff is made of metals. Uh, the Statue of Liberty, Galvanized she's, buckets. she's comple- completely That's right. made of metal. So, um, you know, I can't think of a better thing to talk about than, you know, melting down ores and turning them into sexy statues. Isn't that That's right, right, fellas? Is that what we're talking about today? With massively uh, disproportionate uh, yonders. <laughs> that's my favorite that's part. My, that's my favorite part. That's my favorite part. <laughs> no, seriously, folks, today we're going we're gonna to dive back into the world of metal. If you were with us on season one, you got a tasty hunk of, of metal goodness. And with the weather and, and the, uh, the cold and the, the, the gloominess, it's time to bring metal back into your lives. That's right. It's time for that ho, ho, ho. Yeah. What has the coolest <laughs> covers, though? Like, think about that. What musical genre There's has some awesome the coolest covers. covers? There's some awesome covers. It's, it's metal. It's metal. Metal's got the coolest covers. Yeah, it's got monsters. It's got uh, disembowelments. <laughs> it's got everything. It's got cows shitting out uh, people oh my God. if you were there for Patreon. Yeah, you got you, you got you right. got to you got to see some <laughs> hot metal, some hot, hot metal. Hot, Actually, I had a, I had a metal moment. I had a metal moment the other day. So, um, our couch, who is older than my my son, I like that uh, your couch is a person. It, Grandpa it finally couch. finally yeah, kicked what, it. We're gonna couch, I, you're gonna name. hear why it was a metal moment. So, we've been trying to get rid of this couch, trying to get rid of it to get a new couch in. And Do you get a spring in your ass again? That is what? Yes, you got to you got to you, you sprung a second butthole. That that's right. And it can't be happening. <laughs> can't have that. Um so we I've been trying to get rid of this couch. My wife finally said, "Hey, I found someone. They'll take it for like she told me the amount." And I was like, "The hell you say? That is a day's worth of wages. I am not having that." So that couch I decided, has our children in it. <laughs> I decided <laughs> to single-handedly Dits. Do you really want to give away your collection of pizza crusts? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. People, people no. should be thankful to have all my smells. I shouldn't be paying you <laughs> to take my smells away. So I decided to single-handedly dismantle this couch, and I started taking it apart, and it was straight out of a, like a murder movie, okay? Wait, I, wait, I'm, like, wait. <laughs> I'm like taking it apart. I'm breaking up the pieces. This couch is like a beloved member of the family. I'm crying as I'm cramming springs. And, Why are and you doing this to me, Father? <laughs> no! Chips of wood into bags. And I'm like taking them out rolled up in old you know, <laughs> canvas drop cloths to the dumpster. And people are looking. <laughs> neighbors are taking pictures of me. Like they, they, they know something something's up i'm i'm weeping the whole time again this couch has been with me for a long time and it was one of those moments of like (laughs) what have i become and you killed milford yeah how good that was my metal (laughs) moment (laughs) that's a that's a that's a death metal black metal song right there couch family couch disendowment i'm so sorry you beautiful brown (laughs) full-bodied couch yeah, it was just the whole time that old music is, you know, and, um, you know. And you're just sawing your beloved uh, family couch. I tell you what, pieces. <laughs> Ink saved his full day's worth of wages. That's right. You stuff That's a bear right. with the insides and it comes alive and suffocates you with your own pillow. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you have to, uh, to, to, Commit murder to save uh, save a few bucks. I, I, I tell you what, uh, this was my ultimate history dad moment. Where it was it was kind of one of those country boy moments that I've talked about in some of our, in our last episodes. Where it's like, I don't think I'm a country boy until I'm like packing my beloved family member couch into bags and to to throw it away to save some money. Guilt, guiltily throwing them into the trash. Oh my god, I felt so bad. Well, I've done the, I've done the same thing. I uh, I took our old mattress. Uh, our 
mattress base or whatever that thing is. Your DNA and collection. You're not allowed to. Our DNA collection. You're not allowed to dump. You're not. You're not allowed to dump anything in oh, my you complex. Oh, you burnt so it alive, you sick I, fuck. I uh, I took it apart with a crowbar and into small components, <laughs> and then piece by piece snuck it out to the dumpster. Piece by piece. <laughs> metal moments every day, folks. You too could have what a metal What we do moment. in our apartments. That's right. Well, folks, the right. uh, the brutalizer of couches here is known as inks. That's right. And uh, the dismemberer of beds is known as Brengineer. Uh, and I'm the, the sad bystander tapes, just watching horrified <laughs> from his window, calling the police. The tapes, but they, the they never believe him. They just keep think looking, I'm crazy. And keep then these, up, guys, two, these two guys show oh. up and start tearing my furniture no, apart in front of me. Wise. They pick make me watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're about to get into a monster of a metal show, y'all. So if you want to follow along with our slides, you can find those um, at the website CoverDecoder.com. You just click on the episode, and down below will be a single beautiful link. No more, no more towers of links by from me. No. Just one beautiful glistening no. link to take you to our Google slide, and you can follow along if you're not glistening. driving or tearing apart a couch currently. So Yes, screaming. With that... Let us begin. Where are we going first? We're going we're going somewhere special. Oh, are we? Yes. We're going somewhere very special. And it's it's very special because one of our listeners special. did what we always ask you guys to do. One of our listeners heard the special. call. A special they, person. They, they they yes, they they graced Eating us the call. with a very special cover. This was Strider Cajun. I'm going to say that one more time because I don't know if I got that right. It's ki- it's got to be Kaijin. Strider Kaijin, which yes. sounds like something that Godzilla fought. Because um, he is. He is. <laughs> something. And he kicked Godzilla's ass. You're yeah, badass, he's, Strider. He's great. You he, punched he follows him right us a, a lot on Instagram. He's very Kaioka. active on Instagram with us. And um, he sent us... A hell of an Ozzy cover. Now, Ozzy Osbourne's kind of special to my family. You know, where I'm from, it's not all banjos and uh, and and acoustic guitars. It's there's a lot of love for metal and hard rock and uh, heavy okay. metal, especially. A lot of people dress Tight like pants. bikers and don't own a bike down there. So, um, Ozzy Osbourne was a big. Uh, a big favorite amongst the folk that I lived lived around, and, um, and your kin. But my I don't kin think they ever saw him kin. in this light. Your cows were either getting raped by Yetis or doing cocaine with Ozzy Osbourne. That's right. <laughs> A lot of people don't understand Ozzy. I understand Ozzy. Me and him are like Kendrick spirits. Do you want to get high? <laughs> so <laughs> we got we we got we got a. Um, you gotta click on this first slide so you can oh, see Ozzy no. holding. Oh, I hate. I, 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 no. Full disclosure: I, I I hate this album cover. Oh no! I've you always. Lo- I know why he I've hates always, it too. I've always hated this album. Oh, cover. Look at Ozzy. Okay, first of all, yeah. can we just? I used to own this, and I specifically I gave it, it too. away because I couldn't stand the cover, and I hated that it was in my collection. Oh, I love just it. Talking it's to still, you in the I night. I love it. Can Can we just start off with the fact that Ozzy looks like? Your aunt Debbie at a family dinner. Oh yeah. They start talking and they start talking. They're getting ready to say grace, and suddenly she's like, "Hey, you know they used to call me Double Decker Deb Double because Decker I could always Deb. fit another. That's I could always right. fit another band's yeah. member." Yeah, that's right. That's right. Quite, you know, Tommy Lee and Neil mother. Pert once did a dong solo on my cervix. That's right. She's always. She's always. She's Either always, that, or or he looks like the woman who who. Threw a <laughs> fit in the grocery store because she had to wear a mask. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you see, absolutely. You see this jacket? This jacket was made with pearls from another That's country, right. harvested show by some, tiny hands. I don't have to wear your mask. I'm out my celery. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Ozzy. <laughs> okay, so this is Ozzy holding a uh, a beloved cover sent Holy to us shit. again they by just, Strider. They just woke him up. And he's like, I don't know. But here's my record. <laughs> yeah, Strider <laughs> sent us this because um, he had to. He had to 
to uh, let us know that this existed in the world. I didn't know this existed in the world. You two fellas did. Um, this is oh, the this ultimate is one of his sin. best selling records, folks. Really, ultimate sin by Ozzy yes. Osbourne. Osbourne. Yes, and um, this was released in 1986. The art is absolutely by Boris Vallejo. Yes, one of our favorites. <laughs> Really? Yes. Oh. Okay, I kind of see the, it now, the painter, but this does not look like a Vallejo piece. Now Brendan the painter understands. of sweat. The, 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 the of sweat the and shiny of glisten, bulges. The Dude, sculptor this is, of asses. This is bubbling. That is definitely a Vallejo ass. Oh, for sure. This is yeah. a bubbling, lubed up Aussie demon just porking <laughs> his way out of a, a mound of bubonic pus. With yeah. a, he literally looks like he's coming out of like a uh, ocean of volcanic semen. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly how the Orakai were made, dude. And that's right. But uh, v- Vallejo's work is amazing because all his dudes and women, with the exception of o- Ozzy's horrible penis face, yeah, th- he's have got, these he's like got, like this is a pizza roll diet look that he's dude, got going no, on. This is like zi- the woman's got ziplocked. Like yeah. roasts in her Incredible. legs and her ass. Yeah. You just take that roast and you vacuum seal it in a bag, and that's what you're getting <laughs> for a cushion there. <laughs> Hold in all the juices. <laughs> yeah, but Ozzy, he's not. He's it doesn't. It's not a flattering look for him. He's got the puffy cheeks. Um, definitely. No. Yeah, definitely some steroid um, puffiness from you know from from rehab, which actually kind of. Yeah. When I went to research this uh, album, it was an interesting journey because he had just gotten out of uh, the Betty Ford Center again right? Um, in 1985 <laughs> <laughs> oh, for, sub- <laughs> <laughs> for substance abuse. And uh, he was presented with a substantial quantity of music by guitarist Jake E. Lee um, that would go on to create this album. And Jake really wanted to get... Um, a contract guaranteeing that he would be credited with the music because he was cheated out of those credits. They fucked him over in the last album. In the last album. And I didn't know that, that Sharon was such a uh, uh, swindler. But I guess she had cheated him out of the credits in the last album. Oh, yeah. And and she's all about the money. If you don't know this, Ozzy Osbourne does not do shit in his bands. (laughs) In, In Black Sabbath, he does not write lyrics and he does not write music. He just sings, does cocaine, and claps his hands on stage going, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> What am I what doing? Is it, yeah. I don't know, but I'm just going to keep yeah. doing it because it's really fun. And, and then well. he sings the song. That is what Ozzy Osbourne does. I love him, but he literally doesn't do anything. His name is Ozzy <laughs> he Osbourne. Spent, he has spent his whole life doing nothing yeah. <laughs> at all. He's a, who, was, who was the Apple guy he was a steve jobs he's a steve jobs where he just he's the front man now he's the front um, man that last band. album was bark at the moon and bark at the moon was also done by Voris Vallejo. he did the background no to it. oh that's Before right we click over to the next slide uh, though, co- i want to say does, uh, real quick is one of photos. these um well real quick well no no so the the, the, the there's the photography aspect right. but then he must have just done the backdrop he did do the background airbrushed or whatever no but so Vallejo, say this real Vallejo quick. does um, have a background in photography and composite imagery as well yeah really so he may he may have taken the photos i'm not going to say that for sure ooh. i will say bark at the moon is my favorite uh well let's go ahead and Aussie click over there record. i'll just say while you guys are clicking over the uh ultimate sin had originally a title of Killer of Giants, and then they changed it last minute to Ultimate. Oh, Sin. dude, Killer of Giants is a sweet yeah. title. Y'all can have that for free. No, no, that's not a used. sweet title. That's that's a terrible title. Dude, but here, like here's it. another here's Killer another Ozzy great. <laughs> Bark at the moon. I've also got a picture of Boris up here. You can just see this. Oh, dude, his, look oh, at his sweet little is. cheeks. Gentle, look at him, man. Oh, mwah, mwah. <laughs> it's a gentleman. Painting the most incredible um, asses. I, I will say um, this Bark at the Moon has the absolute worst lettering I think oh, I've ever oh, seen. Oh, I love it. It is awful. I, I, I love it. it. Strider, I, thank you for I this tangent it. because this looks like carnival, <laughs> shitty, like uh, you, you, you like light up uh, freaking logos. It's just, yeah. it's beautiful. Uh, now, it's horrible bum, 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 in the 80s. Bum, 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 it's beautiful. I love the cover. 
The cover is amazing, and in fact, it would have been really effective with no lettering at all. Yeah, or just the or photo. Just, no, that would have been super. It cool. had to have the the horror movie low font on there, dude. <laughs> the cover's Bark great. Dude, that cover's great. If you dude, guys haven't that's seen not it, even, I don't even know what that is, dude. But whatever it is, this is, this spend, is not cool. This is spend five dollars to see uh, Ozzy the Werewolf Man yeah, in his yeah. cage. He's Come he's he's OD again. We have him here for one night only. When he wakes up, he'll be going back on stage. So this quickly, give us your money. <laughs> I like these two covers because they relate to each other. It's Ozzy becoming a creature. Um, this he's a lot more fearsome and a lot cooler looking uh, as the dragon demon. He Dude, he really like is eating too many demon? pizza rolls. I like semen demon. <laughs> so you like semen yeah, demon? I, I like semen <laughs> That's demon. That's another alternate title that they didn't use. They could have. Semen. <laughs> Seaman Demon. Uh, hey, if you guys are trying to Seaman start a garage Demon. band of any sort, it could be a punk band, it could be a metal band. Seaman Demon is a solid pick. Well, we should say too, folks, um, that so first of all, Vallejo is going to be an episode for sure. Yeah, we. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, We're just gonna talk Tapes about asses me for when an I, hour and a half. When straight. I found that out, he said, "You can't do what you want to do." Yes. You can't. You just. I, have I did. Just, just talk about. The semen demon and and move on, <laughs> which is which is half the challenge in this show, folks. Is is just doing the material that we want to talk about and not diving into the cover portal. Right. But we have brought up a good a, a good point here. So Strider, thanks again because you have yeah. pulled up one of my favorite things about the eighties, which is shitty eighties metal covers. Dude, and the thing is, the oh, this is so good. This is almost a great cover. Cause Brengineer, if if that if it wasn't Ozzy's face on this cover and it was a cool monster, would you like it a little bit more? Yes, you would. Well, you well, know you here's would. the problem with it. Yes, I would. And here's the problem with it. The, <laughs> fa- the Ozzy face looks like an afterthought. Like it wasn't it originally his <laughs> face. Photoshopped. Like Originally, it was something really cool, and like honestly, like the chick's awesome. I love the way her hair like oh, yeah. disappears yeah. up into the, the cloud. atomic volcanic semen cloud. Um, and then yeah, you got this cool looking <laughs> dragon thing. But then it seriously like looks like he had to airbrush over what was originally there and like stick an Ozzy oh, Osbourne man. face on there. Hey, and it's Vallejo just, doesn't use it, airbrush. Okay? Even even if even if they would have like oh, if, even if they would have like sunken his eyes a little bit and made him more like emaciated, but instead oh, he's yeah. just got puffy face. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, it's just bad. He's, he's got the he's got the carbs face. Well, you know thank what? you, Strider, for this. Um, yeah, this and is we should exactly what we we should real for. quick we should say Vallejo folks. Um, yeah. The medium on this is for sure oil and board. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Vallejo almost exclusively does oil on board, and we'll go into it a little more because there's a lot more to do. But um, yes, oil on board. I'm sure there's airbrush, but he's too embarrassed about it to say anything, so uh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't see a, maybe in her hair a little bit, but again, the airbrush is not predominant. It is the sauce, and we're very particular about the use of airbrush. Airbrush is like CGI. You can use it. It can be very beneficial to your movie and or poster in the case of airbrush, but you cannot rely completely on it because then the eye just says, nah and so do the cover co- decoders. Yeah, that's right. That's and, right. and just as a, 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 side, a side note about, uh, asses, uh, just so you Booty. know, we're not being, um, Booty alert. you know, uh, yeah, yeah, we're not uh, being preferential towards. Um, yeah, we're one not. We're not being ass because he makes uh, delicious uh, men's asses oh, too. Yes, that are just yes. as hammy, just as chunkalicious. You know, you just want to like zip reach lock, the painting zip and just, ham juice. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to link to his There's website. Ham juice I'm link to his website <laughs> under his photo. So if you guys are following along, you can click on his website and you can you can spend your Sunday afternoon just uh, just going through the the ultimate. Uh, human oh, dude! Body. Here's the thing: if a Vallejo woman right. stepped out of a, a a portal and picked me up, I would go. If a Vallejo dude picked me up out of a portal, I'd go because you're gonna have a great <laughs> time either way. Yeah, either no matter way. what, there's gonna be an adventure in store for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I gotta say, not all metal is this fun and this colorful, right? And so. I'm going to take you into a uh, a different world of metal, and we've talked about this metal before yes. uh, a couple times, in fact. And 
this is going to kind of, uh, it isn't going to wrap up the story I started over in uh, the Controversies episode, uh, where we talked about uh, uh, Euronymous and uh, the band Mayhem. There is a part two to that coming up. Um, and so I'm going to avoid that topic of this genre. But today we are going to talk about black metal. Yeah. And uh, we're going to do this through covers, purely through covers. Um, and there is a lot, folks. You are going to want to uh, be looking at the slides here uh, to see everything oh. that I have uh, set up. Because he a has list, curated a he worked hard. Yes, I, I worked hard here. Uh, there's so much to love. There's so much to to hate. There's so much to laugh at. And black metal for a lot of people is sort of um, a touchy genre. I see uh, a lot of um, division in it. Um, it's controversial in places. Mm -hmm. um, it's ridiculous in others. Uh, for the most part, it's a uh, it's a lot of fun, and uh, for the most part, I enjoy it. So, let's dive in here. At a history of black metal in covers. Yes. All right. So we're going to start off in the late 70s. Now, what was going on in the late 70s is you were getting harder rock. Wow. You're getting bands like Dust doing their things. Wow. Uh, their thing. You're getting uh, guys like Pentagram doing their thing. Wow. Mm. Uh, heavier, harder rock. All and the good drugs are being discovered. Yeah, man. All the good drugs Remember are being discovered. The beast. The leather is starting to get worn. Yeah, leather's cheaper. Being leather manufactured. Leather is way cheaper. Pour some sugar the on me. The, the gimp masks are flying off the shelves. <laughs> Various cod pieces. Jane Fonda's got her hair Various care cod products. Pieces. That's right. And we are uh, we are about to go into the 80s, right? And so um, yeah. you got punk. You got this hard rock. Um, everyone's got their gimp mask. Love you are punk. ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> and we we have landed in the um, new wave of British heavy metal territory. Uh, it's a great right. era. So, right. It's a great era to be alive. Right. You're getting bands like Judas Priest. You're getting I'm bands rocking. like Iron Maiden, Witch Fiend. You're getting um, bands like Angel Witch. Oh man, um, getting that. I hard like to rock. be between an angel and a witch. You know what I mean? You yeah, get a little you know. bit of a uh, little yin and yeah. yang there. That's my personal little, little video. Heaven and hell. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, don't watch that one. That's not uh, rated for you there. Tammy that's, was uh, in that one too, son. Not, that's not, not not for you, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting you're getting the uh, the heaviness of the of the late seventies rock. Mm. You're getting uh, the aggression of punk, right? Yeah. And so it's this new genre, leather this love. heavy metal music. Lots of yeah. leather love. Tell me about that, dude. This is this is when this is when Tangs was at its highlight. Oh this is when Milk God. Valley was really Dude. exploding. Tangs was the hottest. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, speaking of Tangs, we got three, um, three, three guys oh. here. Dude, who clearly love beef and shares. Yeah, <laughs> they're all beef boys. <laughs> I'm just looking like straight into the navel of the guy with the katana. Oh, he's locked. I know. It looks like he's getting ready to, at you. To, to, to spank this dude, just biting the leather. I'm this ready. Is, this is Johnny from the Cobra Kai. Like, if I'm ready if for you, Abaddon. The uh, <laughs> the competition against Daniel, dude. Those legs are spread super wide. He's ready for a spanking. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I've been a bad shape. I'm waiting for his uh, his pants to rip and his balls to fall. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> that mustache. That mustache commands oh, yeah. respect. This is uh, Venom's first album, Leather Loving. Mm. Leather Loving. Actually, they're, it's, uh, it is their first record, and it's called Welcome to Hell. Welcome. Now, this was a very controversial band. Uh, they had a huge following. Um, who would like to describe the cover we're looking at here? Oh, boy. Um, okay, yeah. well, you know what? This is, this is a big one, folks. Yeah. I'll go ahead and take this. First of all, Black and gold. If you're a graphics person, okay. Yeah. Uh, black if you and don't like this strong genre, choice. shut your mouth and look at this graphic because you would be lucky to have this yeah. under your belt. This is so iconic. People who don't even fucking know what this is wear this. Yeah. So yeah, what you got is that like, uh, you know, Levaeist 
sort of uh, pentagram with the symbols around it. It's the inverted pen, uh, pentacle with the goat in the center. Um, and, you know, he's not really a scary goat. He's kind of a happy goat. He's just kind of sitting uh, there. So, you he's know, a little, he's a little you know, He dark. looks kind of bored. He's like, I'm sick of being in this fucking he's definitely star. definitely a fan of the mascara. Let me out. I just want to eat some grass, you son of a bitch. Um, and in the bottom <laughs> corners, you've got Welcome to Hell. But the best part, and I think Inks will agree, the logo... Oh, I've got to ask. So bad. No, it's, it's so not bad. bad. It's so good. I've got to ask. Oh, it's look pretty at bad. the look at the V. The V is what beautiful. What year is this? What year specifically is this? Uh, I believe it's. I want to say 1980, 1981. So Brennan, 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 with his uh, metal knowledge, his deep files was right. It's nineteen eighty one. I mean, this is a little bit later than I thought, but the seventies was a burston with Art Nouveau logos. You think of Yes and other other bands in that that prog rock vein. Dude, they Roger D- Roger Dean of- had a had a dark side. Oh, right. <laughs> Roger Dean. Welcome Dean's to like, the dark you know, side, Dean. Sometimes I just I just get really peeved off, you know. Sometimes and, uh, I have a spiky turd and I just have to draw yeah. something for it, and that's how I came up with oh, the Venom yeah. logo. I, I feel really. I scrolled oh, it just, on a piece of toilet paper with my blood. I'm chafing. I'm chafing right now. <laughs> but I love it. I think it's great. It's 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 connected. I love organic y stuff um that this has some funk to it. If 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 anything you could say about the cover decoders is we love our funk. We love stuff that leans into itself. And this definitely does. Yes. Well, there you go. This goes to show if you eat too many dry spaghetti noodles and you have a uh, <laughs> A torturous shit. Uh, you might come up with an awesome logo. Oh, Dry dude. spaghetti noodles. So, that's like that's like the divorcee's, uh, you know, dinner of choice. First meal. I'll eat this shit, dude. That's why. That's why this. That's why this. Just, that's why this guy in the photo deserve, is biting this leather I don't belt. Wet noodles. He's getting ready to pass his pasta shit. Don't look at me. The pain. So anyway, uh, this album um, caused a lot of. Notoriety for these guys, understandable. Um, in in England, they were seen as these uh, crazy Satanists, and it was for them. It was all just it was just fun and games. They're just um, it worked out perfectly yeah. for them. They yeah. put out this satanic kind of stuff that none of them believed, um, which is very punk. Oh yeah, they they uh, totally punk aesthetic. They they talked about how they wanted uh, Satanists at their shows to do their worship, and they were just they were just acting it up, talking it up, and the publicity made them household name. Basically, there's no such thing so, as bad publicity. There's no such thing as bad bad publicity. You're absolutely That's right. right. So, incredibly influential band um, started this sort of uh, satanic. Heavy metal. This album sounds like hot garbage. Oh yeah. Um, rumors. Uh, the rumor is that this was a demo that the the label went around and uh, released, and all of their albums sound like hot garbage. Um, their second album that came out after this, uh, called Black Metal, um, coined the phrase black. of what we're talking about. There you go, folks. And black metal was born. And thus it was. So soon after this, um, we get. A young man by the stage name of Corthon. Oh yeah, Corthon. Here we go. Corthon and Batlord. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just a little, uh, a little black metal joke there. Oh, a little yeah, black you metal like joke. Batlord. Bathory. I'm the. So we got the I'm first. I'm the Batlord. It's right. my Bat stage Lord. name. I have a lot of angst. <laughs> so. What do we got in the cover here, here, guys? Oh, All right. so the goat has reappeared. One? The goat's the back goat, on the, the menu. The goat boys. is back, man. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, th- this is this is um, getting very black metal. Black, white, little bit of red for the goat's eyes. Um, yeah, very simple color or cover, but effective because one of the things that I like to do. A lot of times with um, when you're working something that is predominantly black, you work up from the black and you just draw the highlights on the character, yeah. the animal, in this case, the goat. So you've just got the highlights on the goat's uh, uh, schnoz and his horns. Yeah, the schnazzle. And um, you're not really filling out. You're not 
doing the entire outline of the animal. You're just hitting those highlights, and your brain fills in the rest. It's it's very effective. I like doing that myself. It looks like it's done with chalk or something, but yeah. Which there folks, you have it. The goat this is a is this is a, a huge thing about black metal, and I'm sure Brengineer is going to get to this, but um, very much re- resembling punk. It's all it's very much about the whole DIY aspect. So yeah. I assume the Brengineer doesn't have a credit for this because whoever created this, it was probably Corthon, probably just took an image from a film or, you know, another piece of art and just... Yeah, that, that could be very well. And just made it a negative and then slapped his logo on there and that was it. Yeah, there's, there's a story similar to that I've heard somewhere. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't look too much into it because we're trying to touch on, on a bunch of these things. Um but yeah, also another very iconic piece. I believe this came out in um, 84. And uh, Corthon's dad was uh, owned a record label <laughs> and um, <laughs> helped him uh, all through his career release his stuff. Oh, right? I am very um, supportive of my son. Sometimes he gets sure a little what? crazy with the blood and yeah. the screaming. Yeah. And the, and the Satan, but you know. That's, uh, that's um, okay. But- I love him all the same. At least, at least he's doing something. But as you can see, like we're starting to get the aesthetic. Yeah, he's, it's there. He's taken the venom dress, the bones, and the bullet belt, and all the leather, and so he's got leather. the satanic thing going on, and he's got that cover, mm. right? So obviously, this is uh, he's taken a clear influence from uh, venom. And if you listen to the music, it's it's very similar. Dude, uh, he looks style. so evil wearing his his uh, ant's wig. <laughs> yep, and he's, got his, he's got his plastic skull from uh you know the halloween store um he he's all ready to go um same same thing with the recording quality this thing you listen to it it's like it's so distorted it, you almost don't really and know someone what's going just on. shaking nails in a tin can going eh, there you go you yeah, have an album I, but it's a classic and the thing about these 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 albums um what makes them so fun to listen to is Every time you hear them, you hear something different yeah. that you didn't catch before because everything is like sort of submerged in this uh, murky, like underdone production. Um, it's kind of like uh, treasure hunting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you could you can hear his album. dad like, turn off the damn amp. You, you, you flip the power breaker again. Right there on track four, you can hear it right at the very end. Well, I'll, say, I'll say, as I listened to Metal Today, I heard a lot of punk influences. And some of my favorite oh, yeah. albums were very um, punky, especially in the like the way the drums were played. But um, one of the things that was going on at the time was uh, the punk scene. And the big allure of the punk scene was the same thing that you're describing here. Something where it's not polished, but... Nope. It has a fan following because it. if you're in the know, you know it, and you're a part of the club. And then also, one of the things that I remember from listening to the uh, the Spotify documentary about The Clash was that a lot of people heard stuff from punk bands that were like, I could fucking do that. You just, they're just rattling a bunch of nails that's, yeah, to make that's, an album. That's exactly it. And then you just and start I, and I've got to believe that that's what happened that. here. Yep. Exactly. So... Moving down, we got uh, oh, hey, another. Hey, hey, hey. And here Hell we go. Hammer. We've got Hellhammer, and at this point, we're getting kind of redundant. These guys are all looking a bit like they've got the black, they've got the chains. Hey, you know they're, what? The, you uh, know, what I don't appreciate. Their balls are gonna pop out of the rip in their less pants. Less nipples. I'm seeing more yeah. shirts. I'm seeing less nipples. Yeah. Tapes is unhappy. Uh, more mustaches. You hate to a see lot it. more mustaches. Lots of stud. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of be beda- <laughs> a lot of a lot of studs, a lot of bedazzling, dude. A lot of uh, a right. lot of hair perms going on here. We mm. like to look good. So once again, it's the same thing. We've got this uh, pretty DIY sort of cover. Um, it is black and white, beautiful black and white. It's a drawing of some sort of demon coming out of uh, a pentagram or or something. And this one what. says Zatanic rights with a Z. Ooh. Oh, or is that an S? Oops, my mistake there. <laughs> you know, uh, I am not really a big fan of Satan or Zayden. They're not. Uh, um, they're, hey, both, Zayden, they're both. They're both not uh, high either. on my list of uh, of guys 
I gotta believe too, with. folks, that this is the first example of of getting close to a actual black metal logo. Yeah. In fact, yeah. Brengineer's yeah. next example, the logo is a straight up black metal logo, and there is a direct rip off oh. of black this metal logos logo. are special. They're, They're special. They are They're very, very special unique. in their own way. They're all different. So Hellhammer is important because, uh, well, they're a Swiss act, and they later um, became the extremely influential uh, Celtic Frost. Oh, oh um, which, so that was my favorite one I listened today. Yeah. Was Celtic Frost. Yeah. That was my favorite yes. because, again, I love punk, and I love punk music, and I was very familiar with a lot of the songs, especially the beginning of their first album. It had a very, like, you know, punk feel. Yeah. Yep, they were um, very influenced by uh, uh, Discharge. Um, yeah. Oh, British, yeah, you got to watch out British, for that. Uh, punk band Discharge. <laughs> look out for the Discharge, man. <laughs> yeah, that will leave an impression. Yeah. So there are a lot more bands in this first wave of black metal. Um, it's it, it, A lot of it doesn't sound like uh, what you'd expect to hear when you hear black metal you know it's still very much rooted in um the new wave of british heavy metal in thrash metal um the you know lightning fast blast beats haven't quite gotten there yet yeah the production quite hasn't gotten there yet and the the screaming you know, vocals the idea, that you think of that's that's not there either that that hasn't happened yet that kind of started with bathory a little bit um and hellhammer but um it's still very, this stuff's very much rooted in still your sort of uh, rudimentary metal, which is kind of a new, it's still a new genre. It's still figuring things out through the 80s. So here we go. Second wave. And now we've talked about Mayhem a little bit. We didn't get too much into their covers or anything like that. And we're not going to dwell too much on uh, Mayhem because we're going to have one more black metal episode uh, coming up. Uh, these guys had a very interesting career they they are one of the most important black metal bands in the scene even today uh but their history has been fraught with um oh yeah uh, suicide and murder and um let's uh, just say mayhem. that they were dead serious about their craft a little dead now well done my friend <laughs> so who we, who we have here we've got mayhem um Important about uh, this band is sort of the guy who set, I would say, the rules, oh, the, official the official rules, rules of what true black metal is. Right? You know, region black um, metal. <laughs> so, yeah, um, the special rules. We've got uh, Euronymous here. Yeah. Um, who started Death Like Silence Records and um, opened up his notorious. Uh, record shop. Is that him on um, the next slide? That's him on the next slide. Oh, just hanging uh, out. Er, just hanging out. Remember, all these guys are like, they're young. There's, you know, between yeah. 17 and 18, 19, 20. Yeah, I would have gotten um, uh, tighter pants, but they didn't have them. He's contemplating, yeah, my schlong is a little uncomfortable. Maybe I should upgrade to a size, but then they won't be as tight. Yeah, it's ultimately my calves plastic. look as metal. Look, uh, Bulge is important. Yeah. <laughs> to all you listening, listen. Doesn't matter what genre. Yeah. If 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 you're if you want to be a serious yeah. heavy metal guy, you need to look like you have uh, a big old Georgia peach <laughs> stuffed down the front of your pants. <laughs> if you're going to play to Satan, you better have your summer sausage popping out of your pants. So here we have we have Oystein <laughs> Ersif, also known as Euronymous. So Oystein over here um, was obsessed <laughs> with this idea of having this music that was completely dark, completely evil. Um, so Euronymous had this sort of inner circle of friends, and they were all in these black metal bands uh, together. They were called the Oysters. The Oysters. And um, he was obsessed with these ideas of um, having completely dark and evil music um, yes. that no light can penetrate. Oh, very and evil. That, uh, and, and black metal was better than um, any of the death metal going going around. And no other musician doing death metal was as serious yeah, about it's death and uh, true evil as he was. A little, so a little Satan for you, Fufia. 
<laughs> and so um, he set this precedent around him and his friends uh, who almost sort of try to one up each other on how evil they could be. Oh, okay. And so this resulted um, in some destruction of property some shenanigans. And <laughs> some, some shenanigans. murders and some other shenanigans, which I don't want to get into too much because I don't want to ruin the next episode. And so um, he set the stage for what this new wave of black metal was going to be about. Now, folks, if you go, if you go and you look at the Hellhammer logo and you look at the Mayhem logo, you'll see the crosses, though not directly similar. They definitely have a link. Um, they have that same kind of um, uh, what, what the the tang on them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, yeah. It's got a little bit of that that like Celtic-y yes, iron cross. Yes, thank you. There it is. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, def, I, I definitely influenced. Also, this, in my opinion, is when the black metal logo became cemented because it starts to take that very cut up kind of um, shitty looking. Um, Unreadable. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah unlegible, uh, thorny aspect to it. Yeah. And there's there's always like this. I, I, mean, I I've learned to appreciate them quite a bit lately because I'm, you know, hanging out with these guys and there's there's this symmetry to them. They've kind of got this like wrapping butterfly symmetry to them. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is the first official Mayhem album, uh, De Mysteries Dom Satanus. Horrible, uh, horrible album name logo, by the way, on the bottom there. Oh, yeah. Really the, bad. Yeah, the font's terrible. Uh, the church um, on the image, it's just, it's very high contrast. It's just black and purple. And what's significant about this church is that, um, well, it had to do with some of the destruction of property going on. And we'll talk about it later. Yeah. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. So mo moving on, we're going to go into uh, some of the artists here <laughs> from the second wave. And we've got Emperor next. And folks, the, the, second, the, wave, side the second wave is like when things start getting technical interesting and interesting technical. and like yeah. exploding this exactly metalosaur evolved to black metallicus yeah they've got feathers now. metallius the dinosaurs have feathers <laughs> That's right yeah the <laughs> this pokemon has evolved all right <laughs> That's right. so what i've got here is i got the band uh emperor um they're looking very grim and frostbitten oh man look they've at that their, look at their that pointy paint stick on They've got so their club with nails in it, their axes, their hoods, their long black hair. Why is this, this guy sniffing this, this nail? What did he rub that nail on? Know. Have you been I, putting this inside yourself again? I told so you tough. to stop that. That's the nail he uh, he hung his girlfriend's panties on. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes, get Einstein, it. this is your girlfriend's panties. <laughs> I have to say, I watched, I watched the documentary to prepare for today. Uh, until the light takes us. It was a 93 minute documentary. It could have it's been 63 minutes, but the Norwegian <laughs> cadence, <laughs> they would say something. Well, uh, you know, when it comes to music, I feel that there was a lot of things going on that we were drawing Thinking from. About <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay, just say it. Also, folks, if <laughs> let me throw this out there too. If if you look at a, an image of Izane now, who is the um, the Isan, yeah, Isan, or however you say his name, uh, he looks like your friend's tech dad. He's got yeah. his iPad. Yeah. He's got his. <laughs> you're, you're having trouble with your USB cable there. <laughs> yeah. Emperor is important because uh, it sort of expanded on this idea of adding orchestral uh, symphonic instruments oh, yeah. and ideas oh, yeah. into the oh, music. Yeah. You um, wouldn't have your cradle of nut sacks. You wouldn't have your nope. demu boogers. Nope. None of that. Nope. Yeah. No, none of that. <laughs> no, pal. None, none of that. None of that without Emperor. And Emperor did it the best. And um, I will not say I've, I, I liked uh, all their album covers. Uh, some of them are better than others. This, this is fantastic. Is, this is one of the uh, best album covers of all time. Yeah. Yeah, uh, in my opinion, one of the best. This is by uh, Christian Wallen, aka Necro Lord. Yes, you can um, call me Necro Lord. 
<laughs> and uh, Killed it, Nick once Rowe. again, this is just a really majestic, interesting, yeah. technical, um, and honestly, uh, poorly recorded album. I mean, this thing is like, uh, you're really throwing a lot of elements into a poor mix. I mean, it's crazy. But like I said, it's one of those ones, it's rewarding upon um, continuous listens. Yeah, and, it, and it's got Inua Satana on there, which is just one of the most majestic black metal songs ever written. The falsetto at the end is just, oh. And uh, Isan, who's the uh, guitar player uh, singer, was only like 17 when this came out. Um, these guys were young, and they're putting out some stellar music. Young voice. Moving on down, we're looking at Dark Throne. Oh, now, this man, is taking Dark that. Throne, dude, Dark Throne, beer, beer drinking, uh, fat bellied. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love these, these guys. guys. Uh, these, uh, these guys, I wouldn't call them the goofballs, but they're like the guys who didn't give a crap. Really? Like they just sort of did what sounded cool. Uh, not at first. The interesting story behind these guys is that they start off as like a death metal band and they put out a really great death metal record called, um, soul side journey, soul side, soul side journey, yeah. which has incredible art. It is an incredible album. It's actually one of the best things they ever did. And, um, it's become like this classic death metal thing. And I would love to have heard what would have become of them if they kept making that kind of music. Well, and then, um, and then they say to take a complete, uh, creative left turn into black metal exactly yeah. and the reason for that is because <laughs> oystein uh had certain words for them when you heard the oysteen's by uh, rain grill apparently um he thought there were sellouts and they didn't like it and um I don't like it they're sellouts. so they went ahead Dude, and this was their next Oist album Oistine, was black metal whenever something came up that like challenged him he was just like yeah it's not very good it's not yeah. going to be as good yeah. as mine He's becoming a Oystein hater. Oystein wanted, uh, he wanted control. He wanted things to be his way. Um, he had an arrogance issue, clearly. Um, and in the end, that didn't bode too well for him. Yeah. As, uh, as, as it goes. You could say he so had a problem go. with his The head. lesson there, folks. That's right. So, <laughs> and, the, and the lesson is coming. <laughs> soon. So what we got here is we have one of the... I want to say most effective of the high contrast covers, which I um, love this album. It is, it sounds, it sounds like it was recorded inside a coffin. Uh, it sounds <laughs> extremely dusty, uh, extremely Brown. And it, it's a, it's a perfect example of black metal. Mm. It is. I mean, this is just one of those, keystones to the whole genre um transylvanian hunger and what you have uh, on the cover is um fenris the drummer um howling into the night in his corpse paint holding a candelabra i mean it's absolutely ridiculous i'll show you <laughs> it's so ridiculous and then you have the uh, dark throne logo which is an absolute classic yeah once again just a mess of lines um yeah, the if, Dark it's, Throne if, it's, logo if it's legible, beautiful. you're fucking up. And you know what the best part is, folks? Uh, Inks didn't even realize how much he had in common with black metal until he started seeing it because it's all high contrast. Everything oh, yeah. is contrast, and contrast. he loves contrast. Well, and, and so um, being a fan of like hip hop and the graffiti scene, uh, a scene of which I am not a part of, but am a fan of with graffiti, I mean, don't can't prove nothing. Um, the more, the, the less legible it is, the better, you know, you, it becomes its own little like secret that like, and I'm guessing that was part of the allure here too, is if, if you can't read it, you're not cool, man. If you can't read yeah, our you logo, read you're our not logo. cool. Yeah. And, and if you're not, if you don't understand it, then you're not in the know enough to read Dark Throne in that. And that was kind of a, an element from, um hip hop and stuff with a scene that was kind of going on oh, at the same time. Oh, I can time see that this. connection. That's cool. Yeah. With 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 graffiti is uh, if you can't figure out what that says then then you're not you're not with it. Right. And and folks, floor. just for your information, a lot of these covers they don't have artists. They do not have uh specific people 
credited to them because it's literally their Just friend shame. or their girlfriend or the other band member taking a photo and just turning the contrast up or down. Yeah. That's that literally mean it's what okay. these are. We're a big fan of credits here. You need yeah. to credit your artists, but we yeah. understand where this is coming from. Yeah, and, and again, like we've talked about on this show before, part of the show is, you know, the covers are the portal, and the portal will lead you to stories. And black metal is honestly probably more about the stories than it is about the covers most of the time. And right. that's, a, that's in, important because... Sometimes that's what we're going to get, is we're going to get more yeah. stories. All right, and coming down, the <laughs> the almighty immortal. Ooh. Oh, man, uh, dude, the crab ooh. dance. Buddy, it's buddy, all about buddy, the crab buddy. dance. So, this is, a, this is an amazing dance. cover. I like I liked the flame cover. Yeah, so immortal are sort of the goofballs of the scene. Um, <sighs> a lot of people like them, a lot of people don't. Um, instead of just kind of going on and harping on about evil and Satan and all this kind of stuff. Um, they created their own world. Yeah, they were playing uh, a lot of D&D, D&D cool folks. Used to be. Their songs are centered about this frozen, um, ice-encrusted world where, Ooh. you know... Blashier, or however you call it. Ooh, we're mutating into dungeon synth. They got names like Raven Dark. That's right, yeah. Raven Dark is like a, a citadel or something. Um, so it's got this whole mythology behind it, which is really cool. And so uh, I had to put both these covers up because they're both awesome. It's the first two. There's um, Diabolical Full Moon Mysticism and then Pure Holocaust. Um, which are both safe words, too, when you're um, uh, at home with these guys. And I, I have to say, That's right. Corpse Paint Pure is Holocaust. kind of... <laughs> Pure Holocaust! <laughs> Corpse paint is kind of a young man's game because as you age, that white will show every crease, every wrinkle. Oh, dude, in these your, guys, yeah, in your aging face. So it's a young man's game if you're going to wear the the corpse paint. These are very yeah. French clowns that we're that we're looking at right now. They practice <laughs> yeah, the art of going, making you cry. These guys like the ki- uh, like kiss a little little too much. Little, little, right. uh, there's just something yeah. very very. There's something very kiss about these guys. And if you if you want a good laugh, just watch some of their music videos. Oh, okay. they're all they're all they're all hilarious. They're all wonderful little treasures. Uh, make sure you <laughs> check out. Treasures. Um, yeah, make sure you check out some Immortal. Uh, Pure Holocaust sounds like um, a snowstorm. Uh, it's it's disorienting. Yes. There's so much going on. The riffs are so uh, furious. The drums are so fast. You're not, it's hard to keep up. Well, and the, the, the pure Holocaust cover is, I love this cover. I, there's, I love it too. There's something about the photo. Like they look like they're made out of steel. Like the, however they did the contrast. I don't know if it's the lighting or, or, or whatnot, but. Oh yeah. They're just so well, uh, displayed and, and like cut out or however however this was, was thrown up yeah and it's super sharp it's like hyper sharp looking yeah uh, it's really cool it looks like you know you get that feeling of frost and steel which is like real, real quick what year is this it was 93 so you might be having some of the the digital well yeah photoshop yeah, was yeah. 87 so yeah 93 you could be taking in your your photos and making yeah, them you could be doing the yeah. inverse logoing and the, the cutting of the logo. yeah that's interesting. So, Brent Engineer, do you know, um, at this point, there were established labels for these guys, right? Pure Holocaust was released on Osmos Productions. Osmos Productions. In 1993. <laughs> yeah, so 1993, they could have easily, they, they probably had software to to do real um, oh, touch-ups yeah. and stuff. Is and this actually, still the Netherlands, too? Uh, no, Norway. This is, uh, these guys are Norwegian. 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 So yeah, <laughs> so they're you, all folks, about the you're software. probably getting you're probably getting actual colorization messings and knobs and and dudes yeah. and, and tweaks with with Photoshop yeah. here. So But either way, they all look like a bunch of very beautiful menacing clowns in armor. Yeah. And it's lovely. Yeah. You you don't know what's under that leather. No. It's a, you know what's gonna happen to you surprise. if these guys come at you. <laughs> you're like, I wanna laugh. But you're so scary and you're so spiky. Yeah. Why are you yelling at me? Why? Why? Why did? Why does your your scrotum smell like Halloween? 
Don't touch my cheese, dog. <laughs> it's the candy the corn. I stick in my undies. Don't ask about it. <laughs> What's um, up with this next and then slide? Moving down. This is LARPing. Oh, yes! LARPing Enslaved. has been admitted, folks. Okay, okay this, this is my absolutely... Absolute favorite of the bunch. Oh, <laughs> dude, you know why? Okay, what is it? What is it with you and the shit brown? Brengineer is all about the shit brown. Do you remember Clark Ashton Smith, folks? Look, he look was all about the brown eyes. on brown. This, oh yeah, this, this is, is that same Clark Ashton brown. <laughs> but oh, yeah, it is with a touch of thing, like, yellow and red. The uh, the, the sepia. Way, yeah, the way the photo looks, it like it looks like an. Someone went back in time and took a picture of like a Viking lord, dude. Yeah, and he's so he's so surprised. He's like, "What is this witchery?" Yeah, so he's holding his mead horn. He's got a sword in one hand. He's just in this luxurious uh, carved throne in Viking garb, uh, luxurious, like shining, like L'Oreal hair. <laughs> he's got the. <laughs> He's got the, I, he's got the talking, fool's hammer. So may, this has changed may, maybe from... Maybe it's Satan. Maybe it's Maybelline. Yeah. This has changed from Satanism to <laughs> Nordic. <laughs> to Nordic. And that split happened. And something that was important okay. in sort of the black yes, metal yes. Um, ideology is if you're um, a black metal band in, you know, Sweden or um, Norway, I mean, you have this sort of... Uh, heritage you want to represent right right and so um there was kind of a split where a lot of these bands started focusing more on north mythology yes and um norse history yeah it went it went and it went some bands went went kept kept going the way of like venom uh and kept uh pursuing kind of the the satan the satanist aspects while the rest kind of started kind of targeting that uh, neo folk, or not necessarily neo folk, but um, yeah. um, I don't know what you, pagan neo, revivalism. Just paganism. You know what? Yeah. I don't think yeah. that we are Satanists. I think that we are just more pagans. Yes, that's right. Because yeah. because and you so saw that you saw the the, the, um, the the goat in the in the very early days is being um, representative of Satan, but it was more of a pagan uh, Baphomet, uh, if I'm correct. I thought Baphomet was a Satan thing. Oh no! I don't, sorry, guys. I don't know much about Satanism. Sorry, I, I don't my, either. Uh, <laughs> but there is Anton LaVey. there is a let me uh, get out my we're talking how art to history. Beginners guide. There's a painting of these pagan women dancing around this goat-headed god that got associated with Satanism. But I I think it may just be a pagan god. I could be wrong. Cover decoders. That's that correct me. That painting is panned by Goya. Yeah. I think you're talking about. Yeah. Right. Um. No, I think that's a. I think it's a separate. That's a separate thing. Uh, what was Pan related to? Well, what what I'm saying is, a, Pan in a lot a of ways, God, yeah. In a lot of ways, back in the day, if it wasn't Christianity, it was Satanism. You know, Correct. there was yes. if 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 your beliefs aren't Christianity, then they're in the league with Satan. And, and in and maybe, part two of Cover Controversy, folks, yeah. that is going to come up because that was one of the reasons why there was some vandalism going on, potentially. Uh, I will say something about this enslaved cover. I hate that the drop shadow is white on the logo. Yeah. It looks that. so you have a perfect cover yeah. and you have this horrible white. It You know, it's not even drop shadow. You know that this was done on a white piece of background and they just like they didn't have. Um, what do you what do you fancy boys call it? Where you go and carve out the logo vector. Oh, no, they I couldn't I'm, vector. Anything. I'm zooming in. I'm zooming in. This is very purposefully white. No, absolutely. Well, it's yeah. shit. Absolutely is. It's shit. This is definitely enslaved. Left in there. You pooped on your own cover. <laughs> well, and, and the weird thing is, is um, the drop shadow isn't coming from one side or the other, right? So it's if all you're going to create it. a drop shadow, you with your lettering, a lot of times you go to the right or the left of your lettering and you add the new color. And this so it's case, called drop shadow, um, not yeah, drop it's circle. It's on both sides. So you can create that look if you're coming from the center where the light is coming from the center or, or, or from the edges. But in this case, they've got the drop shadow on one side going to the left, on the other side going to the right. So it kind of, it creates a, a, a disorientating um, light effect. Right. 
But this album if, if has I, Lin's if I, Farm if I can on get it, in folks, there and just uh, and Lin's know, Farm my is like the start of that Viking type metal because it is a yeah. beautiful song. It's the Viking. Yeah, this is a great album. Eld, um, definitely worth checking out. Um, they actually went this direction because Bathory, who we talked about earlier, also was the first to go uh, this direction. Bathory actually was one of the first, was the first to start uh, Viking Metal with uh, the album oh, Hammer right. Oh, that's a great album. Which, um, which is an absolute masterpiece of a record, and I highly uh, rec- uh, recommend you check that one out. Okay. So here we go. We've ended with the second wave. That was a lot of uh, stuff to cover. Um, and check all these bands out. Just give them a listen. I mean, they may not be your thing. They're all very fast, very aggressive, but in their own way, they're they're beautiful and they're interesting. Yeah, folks. And if, there's lots of great stuff here. If you remember, well, you wouldn't remember all you all, all you regular listeners, but for for you Patreon listeners, um, if you remember in my episode, we talked about uh, Nile a little bit, and same rules apply where. This music is, it's the storm, you know, it's like Brennan said, it's the blizzard, it is the hurricane, it is the lightning, you know, this music is the natural disasters of music where, you know, it's horrible, but it's also beautiful and chaotic and there's something about that that sucks you in. Um, So that is the pull um, for black metal for a lot of listeners. Now, black metal has continued to this day. It's still it's a very popular genre. If anything, it's more popular now than it's ever been. And so I'm just going to kind of uh, walk you through the good, the bad, Ooh. and the ugly. Real, real quick what, before we for what covers we have to before offer. we begin, so, something that interesting come up. We were talking about the goat and being related to Satan and everything. And this stuff is interesting because uh, meanings change over time. And we were talking about Baphomet as the goat-headed deity. And it was actually a Knights Templar, um, a thing that the Knights Templar were accused of worshiping, that it was this this right. pagan god that the Knights Templar were um, supposed to be worshiping. And then it was then related to uh, witches. And then, you know, fast forward to black metal, they're looking for something cool to put on their covers. And they, they see this yeah. image... Um, probably not really knowing where it's coming from. And next thing you know, it's, you know, a satanic thing. But, uh, you know, meanings change over time. And this is, again, this is modern art history. And goats are dicks, I have to say. They, they're they yeah. not nice. They they stole my food oh, bag when I, was, so cute. when I was a kid. Little tiny and, pygmy um, goats. They, you know, they're ramming into things. They're just dicks. All right. You heard, you heard it first from, uh, from <laughs> Let's English. get to some modern dick. day, current day stuff. I just wanted to, to throw that in there because it is an interesting thing how meanings of images change over time. That's right. Kind Absolutely. of like my relationship with Pam. Yeah, well, you know, uh, it, it started out uh, red hot. I had to sit in the uh, basement and listen to black metal with yeah. Jimmy, even though I'd rather yeah. be listening to Bob Seger upstairs on the it, fucking exactly. record player. <laughs> well... <laughs> Back to you, Brengineer. Yeah. Can't beat Bob. So here we go. Some of these are new. Some of these are older. Um, here's the good. What we got here is we have a new record by a um, atmospheric black metal group known as Afsky or Afsky. Afsky. You can uh, ask me anything. <laughs> and an interesting thing, and you'll notice this about um, <laughs> current, current black metal is um, – uh, people, uh, people are really using. Um, Dude, they're they're uh, taking the Grimshaws. They're reaching they're in there. The they're taking the Grimshaws. Yeah, they... Well, and again, folks. So this is a tie-in with Dungeon Synth because we talked a lot about in our actual Dungeon Synth episode, free domain pieces. This, you know, third wave. I think you would is probably safe to call it. You start seeing a lot of free domain pieces being used um, for covers, which is, I mean. Probably what this is. Brengineer, I don't know if you have a, a contemporary artist, but no one paints stuff like this anymore, really. Um, so a, a lot of this stuff is is being, you know, used because it's 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 free. But things have, have gotten very pastoral I in love the sort it. of yeah, black yeah. metal scene. So what we have here is a piece by H.A. 
Bredekild. And honestly, this painting is so good, it looks like a photograph. Yep. When I saw it, I, I thought, thought it was, it was a photograph. photograph from World War One or something like that, um, or um, sometime before. Oh, there but no, this is a painting. Uh, it's an incredible painting of a woman uh, in a field. He looks pissed. Um, and her father or grandfather has uh, had a heart attack or has died or has fallen, and she is yelling for help. And um, get me a those... goat! I'm yeah. a sacrifice right now. <laughs> I bet one back. of those goats, uh, yeah, got to him. It's striking, and yeah. you wouldn't necessarily be able to tell this was like black this. metal, um, except for that logo, which yeah, is white and sort of dripping, dripping down. And dripping down and you're kind of wondering what that's about. And the subject matter is is um, obviously pretty sad. Which is why we were talking so much about the logo, folks, because a big part of how you can tell something is a black metal album is because of the logo, you know? Um, And and this one is really cool because it's it's white on white, which is such an interesting take. Yeah, but it works really well. Um, And like Brent Engineer was just saying, the mood of this is is different because, you know, we go from black metal being all about being evil and dark and meh. To just being kind of sad, you yeah. know. I miss I miss my dad. I just all miss all, him. All in all, it's a way to convey emotion. Exactly, right, right. and yes. that that's what music is. I mean, it, it, not always, <laughs> but for me, good music is a way to convey emotion. Correct. And black metal happens to have you know its emotions, which is you know, l- lament and, and and sadness and despair. And leather. Definitely. Leather is an emotion. And leather. Nipples. So Spanking. We, we've dropped, <laughs> we've dropped the, uh, I don't think the, uh, the peasant Oysties. woman here has any uh, leather hidden in her, uh, under her bed or anything. I have spanked oh, him right. too much. He's out spanked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next one we have um, is for a band, a one, one uh, man blackmail band. Oh, uh, this is sorry perfect. If I, sorry if I mispronounce this, but it's uh, Paysage to Heaver. Nailed it. Uh, Nailed it. (laughs) Nailed it. Nailed it. Hey, to Heaver. uh, Are you here? Please stand up. Uh, (laughs) um, Come to the front. And what you have is just this sort of bent over, robed maybe figure. Just a silhouette against this desolate, snowy landscape. Um, Minimalist. This is a minimalist photograph. I have no idea who took this. Um, I couldn't find it. But um, one thing I, you'll notice about uh, black metal, like we've talked about, is you get these minimalist uh, album pieces, yeah. which just convey that despair we we're just talking about. And uh, this album, if um, I don't know if you've heard this one tapes, it's incredible. Yeah, it's um, it is, is amazing. This is, this is actually a demo from 1999, um, and it is just uh, it is raw. Uh, the vocals are just horrific, but it's got these really beautiful um, sort of violin pieces. Maybe it's um, a keyboard or whatever, but definitely sets it apart. This uh, this piece here is by Drudka, just a very, once again, it's a sad pastoral piece with this slumped over person in the sled. Hearing uh, yeah. a coffin, coffin and his kids are sleeping yeah. by coffin. grandma. Yeah, Pop Pop yeah. did not make it through the winter. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then um, next over for the band name win departure chandelier. Yes, Look at this. yes. <laughs> departure chandelier with the album Antichrist Rise to Power. Uh, this is Napoleonic black metal. Uh, the lyrics are about Napoleon being the Antichrist. That's right, folks. Right. Okay. Um, and so this album, uh, this band's Canadian. And the whole concept is um, about uh, French history and Napoleon, oh, okay, um, and taking over Europe. And this is a uh, an image by uh, Renault, who's very uh, oh. very famous uh, painter. Which again, going back, yeah, we talked a- we, we talked about you know the black metal split where you know we're going from like you know just being evil angst Satan to moving on to kind of branching out and, and embracing other aspects of yeah um, creative mediums. And here we have a black metal band tackling history, which is 
awesome. Yeah. The, the history That's is what metal's full all about. of drama. Yes. And, and, it, and it's a great place to mine um, stories that, I, and I'll say this too about tapes and bridge near, uh, um, like their, their, their tastes are very vast, but I think the overarching similarity between the stuff that they like is the extremes of the human experience, whether it be, you know, World War Two, whether it be, you know, black metal, where it be history, uh, it's the extremes of the human experience. And, uh, you know, it's history's full of it. Yeah, it's good to experience that stuff. And you know what? I will say, don't drink Polar. Don't drink LaCroix. Drink Waterloo. (laughs) 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 Waterloo's got that grape flavor. I'm all about that grape flavor. It's got a little bit of Napoleon in every sip, folks. Waterloo, give us a (laughs) sip. You've been waiting for that joke all this time, haven't you? That's what you bring to the party when you want to embarrass Napoleon. Be like, yeah. <laughs> hey, Napoleon, I, I brought your favorite uh, seltzer here. Uh, remember Waterloo? <laughs> Do you remember that place? Oh, just kidding. But these are great. That's why he died, because he wasn't drinking Waterloo. Yeah. Remember how That's you right. lost there? <laughs> now, we're moving on to uh, my favorite uh, American black metal bands. Oh, um, dude. Here we go. And- we're Inks. just gonna f- we're Take gonna flip through look. these real quick. Yeah. So these um, most of their art it was done by um, Chris Verwimp. Now Chris Verwimp has a Facebook full of incredible art. Okay, here this we guy go. This guy is a and he signed machine. It. Yes, oh, you've got to check out this guy's art. He's incredible. Um, is he wearing the Predator's I, fishnet clothes? That's right, dude. The, yep. Oh. <laughs> He, so we're back to leather, did, boys. Um, back to the leather. He's done all of the um, Abzu albums, save for the first one, I believe, uh, which was done by Timothy Phillips. Um, so what I like about Abzu is they're from Texas, and um, hey, they yeah. are a um, there you go, mythological, mythological occult black metal band. Which and if means I'm they, correct, they do Celtic lore, correct? Yeah. They talk about Celtic lore. Yeah. They talk about Mesopotamian uh, lore, uh, old like magical traditions, things like that in their lyrics. And these covers are just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah this is this is um, imagination catalyst right here, folks. Well, yeah, uh, and, I, and I'll and bring also, this up too. Yep. I don't know what it is, but um, I'm from like the Houston area, and Texas is a big place. It's a big old but, piece of land. But the, but the Houston area has this love affair with horror and and darkness and intensity. Oh, really? Um, that that comes out even if you listen to uh, hip hop that comes out of that era or that area. It's 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 a horror hardcore hip hop like uh, the the Nappy Boys. They had they were really into the horror elements of. Uh, into their music and there's this darkness there that that shows up a lot and like i said living down there a lot of people liked metal a lot of people were into the metal and the the you know whether i'm not sure i'm not sure what genre but this kind of stuff was um a favorite and um, that's what happens when you stare at conway twitty's eyes for too long (laughs) you start to embrace it's it's too hot and um, I don't know. It just creates this uh, this this desire for um, the intensity of, of the of the spooky and the uh, the. You know dark. that's that's kind of an interesting thing. I don't know what it is about hot 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 places, but you know yeah, another big another big place where metal and black metal is huge is actually Mexico. Mexico has oh, a yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, South, yeah. South America in South general. America, yeah, and Latin America. Yeah, and maybe that's a big part of it. Um, you know, with with the mixing of uh, populations and stuff like that down there in Houston, because th- there's a lot of people from all over, but specifically from Mexico. And maybe that's a big part of it too. But there's this, um, I, I, I don't know what I'm trying to get across, but people aren't afraid to seek out darkness. Right. Hot weather makes you dark. Yeah. I mean, look at Tampa, Florida. That's where all the death metal comes from. That's right. So, uh, you get your so, balls all stuck to the side of your leg, and next thing you want to do is uh, churn out some uh, evil riffs. I'm mad as hell. That's why yeah. you got to strap them in a dong sling and, and wear those tight pants. 
So don't so slide no down your leg. You got to get your, your plantain nest. <laughs> your <going>. plantain nest. <laughs> there's, no, there's no temperate climate black metal. There, there's just, it's either no. too damn hot or it's too damn cold. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So, so that Chris, right. Chris Verwimp here. What's he? What's he painting in? Oh, he's. This is like. This is like medieval. From what predator. I can tell, water, watercolor, watercolor. It looks like. Holy and, shit! Um, oh, I, wow. I saw he was doing some stuff with a uh, colored pencil too. Wow! So, um, Good job, Chris. Now, Holy I, smokes! I this told, is some. This is wrong, some watercolor mastery. Some watercolor. Yeah. Look at the look water. At that. I got to. Zo- I'm, I'm zooming into yeah. that. Look! Look at that! That. It's hard yeah. to get highlights in watercolor because you have to make sure to keep that white uh, preserved. You can't layer in too much color or you'll lose it. And so with acrylics, you can go back and you can add white. And, and uh, But if you're using straight watercolor, then you really have to be careful about your white spaces. And he did you a can, fantastic you job. You can really tell on the clouds that it's watercolor. Yeah. There's that, yes. you know, the, the paper. I, you know, I got to believe yeah. it was done on some sort of paper because you can kind of see, see the grain. Yeah. You know, that grain. Yeah. That thick paper grain yeah. where the watercolor spread. But oh, still, the lines are thick so paper. thick. Paper is um, the best. Yeah. The lines are so crisp that it's hard, yeah. like it's hard to believe it was all I'll just tell watercolor. you what. If I was to do this, yeah. I would probably do the watercolor and then come back over it with acrylic to get that the moon and the waves. Fantastic mm-hmm. piece, Chris. Yeah, I, I mean, it's what drew me. And the thing about this is when you look at the album cover, there's no logo on this. They just left it like this. Beautiful. Wow, really? They let the art do the talking. Yeah. They let Pay the art it up talking. to the so, artist. Um, and yeah, it's just, uh, it's such a good piece. I just, I really love this band. Their music is just uh, really intense, really fast. Um, as a drummer myself, um, the drummer here really inspired me to like start because he sings and drums. So he uh, inspired me to start doing some drumming and singing too. So uh, all around, just like really impressive, fast, aggressive, technical uh, lyrics are interesting. Anyways, that's why I uh, I feature so many uh, Abzu uh, covers here. Yeah, because uh, I knew you're a Texas boy. Well, and, uh, and, one of my favorites. And and I'll say real quick, I misspoke earlier. I said nappy. I was thinking of nappy roots, and I mixed nappy roots with ghetto boys. I was thinking of ghetto boys. They come out of Houston, and they they had a really horror core hip hop, is what they called it. So, um, if you guys like the darkness, but you want to try some hip hop, that's that's one you can look at. But yes, um, I I can I I can feel it. I can see it. I love this cover. There we go. So now. We uh, ended on a high note. Let's go into the morass of just terrible black metal covers. Uh, and here, here, here we go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> right like into it. the bad. Dude, Cradle of Ballsack, we're back. Cradle of Ballsack. Cradle okay, of so nuts. what we got here is we've got Cradle of Filth's album Midian. Oh, um, man. Dude, this is, 2000, this is 2000s VHS covers. Oh, my God. Oh, this, dude, is, oh, this is, so, this is bad. so bad. Why am I? No. Oh, oh he's got a photo. Uh, and then we have... Oh. We have Dark Funerals, um, Diabolus, and Tepra. Okay, or so Cradle like that. of Filth, Cradle of Filth, Dan, speak Latin. Danny Rotten or whatever is fucking Danny Filth. Danny Filth. Danny Filth. Yeah, Danny Filth was loved Mortis, right? You know, it was it was orcs and goblins and breeding an army, ah. and uh, and and just decided to take that. Up? Decided to take that and mix it with vampires. And then make shitty pop black metal and put dumb, yeah. Yeah, kind of terrible CG covers together. Vampires. What is going? On? Look at this cover. What is <laughs> no, this? What's this like weird? I don't even know what's going Scorpion on. Thing. Um, oh, oh! <laughs> but neither of these, neither of these evoke any interesting atmosphere. They're not well done. No, uh, here's the really, problem. We're going really back to this. We're like, going. If you notice, folks, like. People took the the satanic mystic you know mysticism kind of thing that was going, and they they went too far. You you took it too far, you, and you it went became gremlins too. Yeah, what what happened is it turned into like insane clown posse for black metal, where everything was these like stupid yeah. s- like demons with Hellraiser th- touching their nipples, going. Well, I gotta ask. I gotta I ask. Wear me. A so penis what? worm coming out of his navel. So here's the thing. Okay, Cradle of Filth's logo, first of all, is too clean. 
You're not black metal. Your logo's you know clean what? and stupid. I, I like... No, you don't. Okay, okay. Take wait, it wait, back. Wait, we're talking about clean logos. I mean, look at the Dark Funeral one. Um, yeah, actually, the, the Dark Funeral logo I, I like. And guess what, folks? Yeah. It is clearly a rip-off Venom. I don't think there needs Venom. to be... I don't think there needs to be any rules around what a logo should be. Yes, no. there you know? like, do. I, there do need to be I, rules. I think, not these I ones. Think the, <laughs> I think the Cradle of Filth logo is just fine. In fact, it's the best thing about the band. Well... I That's mean, th this... That's all they've got. They've got a cool logo. Yeah. This cover's not... It's it's too much. It's pretty... It's pretty awful. This should be Tapesian, but it's not. But there's I, things I, that I... I hate I, this cover. I, there's things that are done well, but then they're all put together. They're all smashed together. It's like, I like hamburgers and tacos and lasagna, but I do not want a hamburger <laughs> taco lasagna. Okay? How do you know? Have you ever had it? Yeah, I mean that sounds. Oh. I mean, here's the thing: we're talking about covers, not food, though. Okay, here's That's the thing. What okay, I'm Dark right. Funeral. The, lo the logo is fine. The logo is an image. It's great. <laughs> There's too much. There's too much. Take your sexy demon hands off your chest. Pull back mm. from the the flesh, the flesh tunnel, and the hooks. Mm. It's too much, folks. It's not evil. This doesn't scream evil. This screams corny. Okay. Well, yeah, you, you could easily throw uh, a different logo on here, and this could be some sort of like edgy rap album. Oh, for like, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, or, yeah, uh, yeah. New metal album. Yeah. yeah, MC Hook Nipples. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so moving down, we got the last two here. We've got Satyricon's Rebel Extravaganza. I, I hate this cover. I love this album cover. This is Rage Against the Machine. Oh, I love this. I, I think it's horrible. There's... And then we have Marduk's <laughs> Heaven Shall Burn When We Are Gathered, which is easily one of the worst album covers I've ever seen. Yeah, no, this looks in like... In my entire is life. This the orcs? They have so what we got here, folks... Of bad covers! We have a, we have a terrible, like, uh, MS Paint uh, castle with a stretched sky. Like, they took the sky off of uh, Google... And they stretched it out. You can tell it's been stretched and Dude, badly they, proportioned. They pasted their, again, with a bad drop shadow. No, it's not. All right, I'm yep. telling you, this is not drop shadow. This is bad. This is bad what? cutting out of the logo. So, so this is not This is not using your highlights right. Oh, dude, you're absolutely right. This, this is, is not using. Poorly listen, you've got to you've got to use your highlights and your shadows right. That's one of the big things you got to understand. And and it can go wrong quick. If your highlights become your shadows and vice versa. And so um, that's one of the things you got to understand, especially when it comes to stuff that is highly graphic like logos, is to when to use your highlights and your shadows. I mean, there's stuff in here that I like. Like, I like this orc dude in the front with the big schnoz. I mean, he's well done. Um, there's there's elements in here that are good, but again... No, there's not. This they is put just a logos, bad cover. This is <laughs> put horrible. Logo all bad. over their I don't even like the orc. Why, does, why do the shields have Marduk on it? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so dumb. It, it's bad. Like, whose idea was that? It's, it's, and then it's as the Satyricon one, Satyricon's no, like, cover. Look at like, this is ring. Frost, no. Frost is so proud of. Look at him holding his ring no. up. I just bought this oh, at a no. sale. Oh, you're talking look about this one. Look at my ring. No, look at it. No, it, yeah. it's got. Uh, they thought they were so like, cool. It looks like they listened to a bunch of Nine Inch Nails. They got really excited about Nine Inch Nails. And they decide to yes, and yes, industrial they were very into excited. their oh, thing. Yeah. Blech. And uh, this does not this does not say black metal album. This is, says like uh, embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> couple of this is like embarrassing. Yeah. This, is dads got this is reinventing myself. So, folks, oh, there's man. another this thing is, that happened. This there's is, a thing that is, happened it, when when black metal bands decided they were going to make a change and change their sound. The lead singer would shave their head. Bald. That's a thing that would happen. It so rebirth. rebirth. Well, also, I think that also just they did the middle aged dude thing where they got the tribal tattoo on their their cover. Oh so oh, yeah, the tribal oh. tattoo tribal on their You just ruined it. You did. Yeah, it's yeah, right. Yeah, bro. Yeah, oh, bro. You're right. Yeah, I'm hard. <sighs> so this is that album. This is like for me their sellout album. This is where they went. They went on a uh, tour with um, uh, Pantera and did their their black metal thing or whatever, you know, their uh, industrial black metal thing and 
made a bunch of fans. And I, I, I did not like this period, particularly because the album that did before this, Nemesis Divina, was like yeah. their crowning achievement, their crowning glory. And it's an amazing album. I didn't include the cover here, but it's an incredible cover. And uh, they really just uh, diarrhea you know, the bed in this one. What's really cool with this album, folks, is sometimes you got to take that pasta shit to get to where you're going. And a lot of people fail, but Satyricon after this album reinvented their sound and they yeah. came back in a big way. Uh, I, I want to say it was Volcano, Volcano after this, which is a really cool album and has a really cool cover. I'm sorry. Hey, Jimmy, um, I'm having trouble naming my next album. What should it be? <laughs> uh, Volcano. Volcano. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Okay, I love that Volcano. Album shitty. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the cool thing is, is sometimes you have these covers and you're right. It, it's, it's a total, it's a total drop in the discography. You're like, where did this come from? But you look at the step next and you realize, okay, this was the, you were, you were eating pasta, raw pasta noodles. And this is what happened. Okay. And look, look at, right. uh, look at Seder. He's clearly passing that pasta turd. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they weren't even, they weren't eating spaghetti noodles. They were eating those shells, you know, that <laughs> turned the, like those sharp shards. Yeah. And it was just, uh, yeah, it came they out embedded. Cutting. Well, and two cutting and two, I mean, this is an era in which the record companies were, were uh, big and they That's were true. controlling a lot of things and they were, you know, looking at focus groups and, and awful yeah. shit like that. And I'm glad that we finally pushed through that era into the current day where it's, you know, becoming more artist driven. Oh, I, the ugly. I added, oh. I added Marduk and here's why I add Marduk. We're going to come down to the ugly of black metal. And, uh, I should have said at the beginning here, um, if, if you are opposed to looking at Nazi stuff, uh, well, I'm sorry I didn't say so earlier, but here we are. We're looking at the ugly uh, in black metal, and that is um, there is uh, NS black metal, National Socialist black metal. Uh. Now, what comes with a genre where you are trying to um, write songs about evil and you want to be as evil as possible? Where does that take you? Uh, Where's the most yeah. evil you can be? Right? Yeah. Um, uh, ignorant, stupid ideas. <laughs> yeah, listen, w you know, w we love to explore all things cover related, and sometimes that takes us to an ugly place. And um, yeah, you folks need to know that this stuff exists because one of the things you do have to do, kind of, when you start getting into black metal, is a lot of these bands aren't up front. Some of these covers you wouldn't know. I mean. <laughs> So lots of the ones we're looking at now, you would for sure, but some of them you wouldn't know. So you, <laughs> you right kind of need to do, there. yeah, you kind of need to do your research a little bit um, because you know it's it's important to know what you're listening to, and right. you know right out the gate, uh, if you're looking at these things and you think they're cool, um, it's not. You know <laughs> this stuff's not yeah. cool. It's not yeah. awesome. It's not dark. It's stupid and it's ignorant and it's dumb. Okay, right. There's nothing. Ex <laughs> art is important. And it matters, uh, and it affects people. And you have to be careful what you're promoting. Yes, exactly. And end, end end of dad rant. So I put this th stuff on here because yeah, we're going to be transparent about um, what the genre has to hold, and it does have um, a Nazi issue with uh, bands delving into Nazism. Now, in the case of Marduk, a lot of people say, "Oh no, they just have an interest in." Uh, World War II history. Um, I don't, I mean, they have a very big interest in World War II history in particular, specifically the, the German the, kind, the, 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 the Nazi kind of it. Um, I'm seeing a know, few too many panzers in your album covers there, pal. <laughs> yeah. Um, Graveland over here, thousand swords, which looks sort of just like, you know, a normal right. silly blackmail cover. They're from Poland. And that dude is, uh, he writes, National Socialist Nazi Black Metal. Yeah. Um, Aryan Kampf, 88. I mean, come on. You guys know what 88 stands for, right? Uh, actually, no, I'm not familiar. So 88, uh, eight is the, uh, or H is the eighth letter in the alphabet. Mm -hmm. So hail Hitler. Uh, so 88, eight, 88 is a uh, uh, sort of a, if you see people with an 88 tattooed on them, that's like a boo, Aryan boo, yeah, boo. brotherhood kind of thing. Um, so 
there you go, guys. The the dirty, ugly truth about black metal. Um, sometimes, I mean, I've found that there are bands that I like that are like Finnish, and they, you know, they're singing in Finnish. I don't know, I don't know anything. You know, I don't speak Finnish. And then I see a post like, hey, these lyrics are all about, you know, uh, being pure and white and all this sort of stuff. And boom, they're instantly off my off my iTunes. You know, well, so um, when you're when you're traversing this genre, yeah, um, you know, just keep an ear out. You know, keep an eye out. Yeah. Do your research. And, you know, like we said, art is important. Art matters. But there comes a point where what you're trying, what you can't become what you're trying to purvey. And when you delve too far and you start to go into this kind of stuff and you start to um, become the character that you're trying to get through in your music, that's when shit goes too far. And if you go back and you listen to our uh, the Mayhem episode that Brengineer did a really good um, job of. That's yeah. what that story is. It's about these these kids who basically started uh, developing this this look and this idea, and they went too far, and they couldn't come back from it. And that's what this shit is. And it's 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 not good. It's bad. Wow. Yeah, and it's definitely it just definitely shows you that this stuff is still around. There's still racism. There's still Nazi ideals out there. Um. And that is sad and it's somewhat scary. So, well, well, it it also kind of like our, um, our Lovecraft episode, there are people that are entering into the (laughs) black metal genre that are not your traditional Scandinavian folks. Like, there is a South African uh, metal band called Dimagoroth's Santanum. Yeah. And yeah, that's a that's all African uh black metal band. There is a I don't this isn't black metal, but it's a it's pretty cool Polynesian metal band called Shepherd's Rain. And uh so there is all kinds of uh There's people. a Navajo uh black metal band called uh, Ashtaroth. Uh oh, cool. so yeah, I did not know that. I need to check it out. Yeah, I it's check pretty that cool. Out. So, so the thing is, black metal is not if you and if you're thinking like, oh, you know, black metal is is just for a certain type of people. You know, it it it's black metal is about atmosphere. And if you yep. listen to a lot of the people who've come through the genre, the thing they will say is about it's about evoking emotion. Yeah, it's and, a brush to paint with. Yes, you can exactly. tell your story with black metal, yes. whether you're from wherever you're from. Yeah, this kind of whole Nazi crap is just people trying to post their own personal ideals and agendas right. on music and art. It has nothing to do with the music, folks. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, it's I, I understand it can be a big turnoff, but remember, this isn't everything. This kind of stuff is 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 in any genre right. you look at. So moving on down. All finally, right. To the hilarious. Because <laughs> look at that metal, look at that candle. <laughs> Oh, Black boy. metal is hilarious a lot of the times. <laughs> um, so we have a band called Enochian. Nine, uh, was it? Night Monumental Evil. I uh, like, what, I like this picture? album cover more than both Cradle of Filth and Dark Funeral. <laughs> I would rather listen to this. And so when I was looking through uh, covers, trying to find some good ones, this one uh, popped out at me. Uh, and yeah, this is just absurd. One of the guys has a do rag on, uh, like a bandana or something. Oh, um, you're right. Hey, what's wrong with that? It's a chainmail do rag. Nothing wrong. It's a chainmail do rag. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I don't know. And the other one we have, um, I can't even read what that says. What is that? I gra- grave. I dude. I don't know <laughs> what the, this is. <laughs> well, I, I'll say this. This. This is the burger taco lasagna, but in this case, it tastes, <laughs> it tastes kind of good. The other ter- burger taco lasagnas weren't good, but this one actually is kind of good because it's got, here we go. You ready? It's got the awesome logo. Ding. It's got the inverted cross. Ding. Ding. It's got the goat uh, demon. Ding. It's got corpse paint. Ding, 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 ding. And it's got fire spitting. Ding. It's It's got... A, it's got all of the all of the flavors from all of the black metal. Oh, it's all there in that one logo. Yeah, and you know what? In this that would, one cover, yeah. This would be this would be the ultimate cover if they were all just naked. <laughs> it would be. You know what? Screw the tight pants. They're not cool. Just just well, balls out. 
and, and you've got you've got Uncle Jojo here in the middle, just I'm kneeling tired. down. I gotta down. kneel down. How, how'd you young bucks get me into this? <laughs> you guys spit the fire. I'll hold the hatchet. Dude, somehow they started a fire in the snow. You gotta give them credit, man. This thing yeah, is, look at that. This is well put together. I'm you know impressed. What? It it's funny, but it tastes kind of good. Exactly. And then over we have this weird guy <laughs> uh, in like uh, a mm-hmm. Halloween, yeah. uh, Halloween store. I have never seen costume. this in my life, dude. This is, Where did this you is even Nathan find this? At the Halloween I don't party, know. waiting for some girl to please come talk to him. Hi. Uh, this album is called Satan's Addiction and Pure invited. Madness. Uh, I can't read I what that says. As, good as I look. I'm, I'm not sure what the band is called because I can't read the logo. I oh, like Harry Potter God. and also <laughs> Satan. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm obviously Slytherin. Yeah. Uh, just saying. <laughs> He's got his he's got his witch collar popped. Whoo. Oh, it's way popped. You know what? So there we go. You stick there at go, it, guys. buddy. You're gonna get laid eventually. That's right. Uh there's a lot of this music out there. Uh I mean, I still see covers today that make me chuckle. Uh there are a lot of hilarious albums out there. Um don't judge the music. Uh, based on the cover, this Enochian one I listened to uh, a couple songs on. It was pretty cool. So, um, hey, I like this cover. Ju- I would pick jump, this up jump because in. of its cover. J- j- jump in with an open mind. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Put that corpse paint on there. No matter where you're right. from, who you are, play those chords. Slam yeah. the those best drums. Thing, you can do it by yourself. It doesn't have to sound good, and people will still like it. Yeah, we know you guys are out there, you're listening to this, you're watching these covers, and you're like, I'm not creative. I get you know what you need to do? You need to plug a child's guitar into some sort of amplifying yeah. instrument. You need to put a mic right up against it, turn the gain all the way up, and just play a bunch of chords and then yell into a microphone. Bam. You have created there, a black metal album. You have a lo-fi super cult. Uh, one, <laughs> one, one, you man, have made one person black, black metal, metal album. album. You are worthy of Oystein's Hall of Wonders. Yeah. I don't know if that's you, what it's called, you, but it's something you like can that. Smell his tight leather pants. That's right. And folks, it's it's a uh, a momentous occasion, not just because we have completed a massive stream of of black metal covers, but because we also have two new inductees. Into oh, yeah. the Patreon cover hall. Ooh. So, Strider and Josh, let it be known throughout Coverdump that you have refused to eat from the employee art fridge of conventionality and instead have quested for the banquets of the high cover halls. The Gornak tempted you with deviant art furries, but you fought the anthropomorphic lust and brought the acts of true creation to bear. You ride a valiant suntan Vallejo centaur. You band together with a brutalicious royal babe. And you shine like a freshly oiled Eastly canvas. May your juices forever flow with creation. Welcome to the cover cult. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Yes. We super appreciate you guys. The and cult grows. The cult grows. We. It's amazing, folks, that um, you guys are helping us out, supporting yeah. us. And regular listeners... Just so you know, it's two dollars. That's like $2. that's like a a single Starbucks coffee. That's like a small Starbucks with no flavors. I don't. That's like know one hot dog. If you could get as much flavor from Starbucks as you're going to get on our Patreon, that's right. That's thirty <laughs> cents. That's thirty cents away from a from a a, a hard shell taco at Taco Bell. And I know you're eating at right. least ten or twelve of those a day. And I, I'm I'm excited for the Patreon coming up. I got. I've got a big uh, revelation. So if you want to, if you want to be a part oh. of that, you find us on Patreon. That's right, folks, and we would greatly appreciate it. You're really helping us out. Um, yes. And you know, Thank Patreon you. or not, folks, if you're listening, following, yeah. liking, sharing, that's amazing. Um, and follow Strider's uh, example. Send us your covers because you yeah, might get we'll your talk about it. your we lubed up. Wants them. Yeah, you might get your lubed up Aussie on on cover <laughs> coder. You never know. It could happen to you. Yeah, be a part um, of the discussion. <laughs> that's right. 
But thank you again for being a part of the journey as we uncover the mysteries behind these awesome covers. Our website is CoverToCoder.com. If you have questions, comments, or covers, like I said, Mm -hmm. send them to CoverToCoder at gmail.com. Check us out on Instagram, folks, please. You get to see all of Ink's amazing stuff that he puts up there. Uh, It's at CoverToCoder. Like, review us, follow us. You know it's going to help us out. It's going to help your voice. You know, people are going to find us. They're going to listen. They're going to find the covers. Mm. And that's what we want is the covers. And we are forever grateful. And now, remember to keep your covers brutal. Yeah. Yeah.